Today's podcast is presented by Podgo. Podgo is the easiest way for you to monetize your podcast, providing podcasters with a flat rate for ad space so you always know how much you get when you include an ad from Podgo. Apply today to become a member and immediately be connected with advertisers that fit your audience. That's podgo.co at P-O-D-G-O dot C-O. And be sure to add Booze and Spirits podcast in the How Did You Hear About Podgo section of the application. Hello. I'm Rebecca Rosewood, and I'm here to help you keep your curses hexy and your hexes sexy in this snarky true crime and paranormal podcast. If you like a little personality with your true crime and a little scare with some flair, I've got you covered. Thrice Cursed is available anywhere you listen to podcasts. You can also find my curse content on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Thrice Cursed Pod. And you can find even more at thricecursedpod.com. Until then, keep it hexy. I mean, this isn't a, this guy didn't die, but in 2009, it's a small world broke down and there was a quadriplegic man that was stuck in the good final room, which is the goodbye room. (laughs) <laughs> For about 40 minutes before he was evacuated. <laughs> he just tried to end it all. Just dump himself into the water. <laughs> um, he sued. He was awarded $8,000. <laughs> Is there something wrong with me that I like? It's a small world. Like, I like that it's just invokes torture on those around me. Yeah, like, there's some, there's something a little sadistic about it. <laughs> Right? <laughs> I mean, your mother tried to escape the ride one time. I think that was her <laughs> high school trip. I like it. I like watching the people around me kind of just squirm. Oh yeah. <laughs> Kick it into gear. You groove into the tunes of the Booze and Spirit podcast. And we're sorry. <laughs> Should apologize in advance. It's like a drink with death and an aneurysm for your ears. <laughs> <sighs> the dog even ran away that time. Yikes. Not really. Oh. He's. Sean's home, so he's on the couch. They're watching Netflix together. <laughs> Was that our real start? Are we doing introductions? I'm Nick McDonald. I'm Kate McDonald. Yay. Yay. And we're the podcast that was cursed by a witch in the 14th century that if we receive more than 30 listeners per episode, all our blood will turn to shards of glass. But it's okay. We're all, we're all right so far. Shouldn't I get to do the cursing? Damn it. I always miss the opportunities. <laughs> well, where were you in the 14th century? I think I think I was in a castle at that point. I think we established I was in a castle around then. Running through a castle in a long gown, carrying a candelabra. While Milo sings to me in the background. <laughs> I would do anything for ice cream. But what would you do for a Klondike bar? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Nah, I'm not. I'm not into Klondike bars. They're not good. They're rather plain. Like they're not even quality ice cream. Like I don't even know if that's really ice cream at this point. Like, <laughs> Well, today... Nick's drinking a boozy slushy. Sort of, yeah. I'm drinking from a frozen packet of alcohol and mixer. That's <laughs> that's real, real high-class stuff. Is it malt liquor or, like, actual alcohol? Oh, I don't know. Like, this one's margarita. The one I had before this just said cherry limeade, so I don't even know what's supposed to be in that. <laughs> Where did you buy them? Let's start with that. <laughs> I bought them at, at uh, Winco, but it was, like, out of a box in the middle of the aisle, so... <laughs> Probably malt liquor. I'm going with malt liquor. Probably. I did have to establish. I'm like, oh, yeah, you can buy hard alcohol in Washington yeah. grocery stores. I'm like, this fucking state. <laughs> Where I can buy weed literally anywhere. Mm-hmm. I mean, technically not, but... I mean, legally not, but you can buy weed anywhere. <laughs> That's true. Last night, a few of us were out for dinner and drinks for a co-worker's last day, and I'm definitely not sure if he was serious or not, but one of the cooks came back and said he got some weed from a hobo, and he was going to go smoke it. 
<laughs> and I asked him if it was a stabbing hobo or a singing hobo, to which I just got a glare. <laughs> so it was a stabbing one then. <laughs> Must have been. I kind of miss Oregon, where you don't have to know a guy. You could just be wandering the streets at 7 o'clock p.m. on a Saturday, and some dude will go, hey, are you looking to buy weed? No, no, they don't even ask if you want to buy weed. They just ask if you want some weed. <laughs> I forget whose bit it is. There's some stand-up comedian who had a bit about trying to tell his kids that you had to meet a stranger in the parking lot of a 7-Eleven and get in their car and go to a second location to buy weed when I was a kid. Like, <laughs> like how that's just going to be ridiculous to our children. <laughs> yeah, for real, please. <laughs> yeah, stay lucky. West Coast is the best coast. That's why the East Coast is still smuggling our weed over there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that's not a thing. There's no, no black market weed anymore. No, of course not. not Nobody is nobody does growing that. it faster than they can sell and then having to export it somewhere. I was trying to figure out how we could uh, turn that well, into, on that into note, Well, I was trying to figure out how we could turn that into a sponsorship opportunity. But Oh, I mean, yeah. It would have just been blackmail, so that's not exactly yeah. a sponsorship. Well, I was thinking, though, that like weed tourism is a thing, so that's kind of a good like segue. Well, I kind of tried to side us up on a segue with the West Coast is the best coast, but then we... Uh, then I changed the subject. Yeah. Have so I kind of wanted to do the same thing to you. It was recompense. Dun, dun, dun. Sorry, I dropped an ice cream token. <laughs> He's not making that shit up. He really has <laughs> an ice cream token. Like a giant wooden nickel. The kids went to the park one day and the ice cream truck lady showed up and gave them tokens for whatever reason. Favors? Uh, maybe she, maybe they were playing too close to her house and she wanted them to go away. She kind of lives in that area. It's <laughs> fair. Oh, my legs are asleep. I'm sitting on the floor with neuropathy. Bad idea. <laughs> Peripheral neuropathy does not equate sitting cross-legged on the floor. Speaking of neuropathy, this episode is about traveling. <laughs> Woo! No, no, I feel like there's a better segue here. Grab your compression hose. <laughs> We're gonna travel. Is that like a freeze dried hooker, a compression hoe? I mean, a compression hoe, but I mean, I said compression hose, like your stockings, hose. hose, to keep my blood in the right spot. Like the Jetsons, just add water to it. And you, you get a hoe. Yeah, I got one of my friends, like a grow your own boyfriend, one time that you put in water, but he only got to be like eight inches, which is, I guess, is more than more That's... than enough. So. <laughs> The job has been accomplished. <laughs> We're talking about travel. At least that was our plan, because what did we say? Roadside attractions? Eh, was that the... That sounds like something we'd say. Because we just kind of picked a random off the top of our head topic, and... We just made some shit up as we went along. That doesn't even sound like us. We're never doing that shit again, let me tell you, because this has been one of the most frustrating ones to find, because you can find... A bazillion places that advertise themselves as a haunted roadside attraction, but to find some actual stories about any of them is damn near impossible. I mean, I found, I was really excited to find out that the Lincoln Park Zoo in Chicago is apparently haunted, and that Lincoln Park was like the original cemetery for the city of Chicago, and they were moving all the bodies when they decided to make it into a park. But then the Great Chicago Fire started, and so now they have no idea what bodies are there still. But I couldn't actually find any, like, anecdotal evidence. Yeah, that was a problem I was having with all sorts of things. Yeah, I had the problem where I would, like, find a location that I was sure there had to be something about, like, Devil's Tower or Mount Rushmore or something like that. And spend well over an hour trying to dig through the history and tales and just kept coming up blank on crap. <laughs> Maybe the government has had enough of our shit and is intercepting our computers. They put Could be. parental controls on it. We are both vaccinated. This could have Shut us down once and for all. Well, I don't know. My phone's not set up for 5G. Maybe that's why, because I can't connect and get the proper research on my phone. Oh, well, you've only had your first shot, right? No, I got both. Oh, of them. then I don't know. You should be the 5G now. I may be 5G, but my phone might not be compatible. Oh, you have to get a new phone. You know, my, I make my phones last six or seven years. That's that's amazing. Not copacetic. You obviously drop stuff way less often than I do. <laughs> well, to make up for it, Kel goes through a phone every four months. So. <laughs> it's fair. I almost did, because we're going to do a huge, probably way too many people venture to Yosemite this summer. Woo! 
I almost did a Yosemite for ghosts, but I thought maybe I'll save that for a closer to when we actually leave so that we can be nice and paranoid. That makes sense. Just go down the whole missing 411 list of missing people in that area and make yourself super paranoid. Yeah, I um, cannot hold on to all four children at once. You have three, <laughs> I have one. I, can, I can't, and I have to if we talk about missing 411. We talked about missing 411 and then went on a leisurely hike one time, and I literally just, like, stood three inches away from Ramsey the whole time. Yeah, no, I, I understand. I have somebody's getting, same reaction. Somebody's getting taken by Bigfoot or the Fae or aliens or kidnappers. It's probably Ramsey. They'll give him back promptly, but they're going to take he's, him. He's not the one they're going to keep. <laughs> they would keep Rowan, but Ramsey they would take first, I feel like. Could be. Seems more valuable from a... Uh chaos perspective i guess <laughs> i mean rams it comes with the valuable chaos valuable chaos smeared on my face valuable chaos sandwich <laughs> it's the name of my hootie and the blowfish cover band sufficiently haunted so what I did end up doing, though, is I ended up looking up the place that my family went last summer on a road trip, which was Yellowstone National Park. Did you go to Jellystone National Park, too? Hey, hey, boo-boo. So I did find some ghost stories about Yellowstone. There's a few minor ones, and then there's, like, one big one. And I'm going to try to do an order of interest here, because that's how I keep people paying attention. All right. <laughs> so the first one is not a uh, ghost story exactly but it's really super interesting and it's also really horrible and everyone's going to hate me for telling the story so in uh, 1981 there was a, a pair of men who pull over to observe one of the geothermal sites and one of the men's great dane escaped from the car and just ran headlong into the celestine pool because the dog saw water and said hey let's go swimming Aww. So, ignoring the bystanders, the owner dove into the pool after the dog to save him. How hot is this pool? This was over 200 degree water. Okay, I was like, these are, these are, this is geothermic, this is toasty. Yeah. He jumped in and uh, he tried to save the dog, but soon ended up swimming back when he realized his skin's on fire. <laughs> A bystander that helped pull the man out said that his eyes had gone completely white and presumably blind from the water. Oh, this man did end up dying from his injuries shortly after being rushed to Salt Lake Hospital. And the dog, of course, died as well. The interesting science Mr. Wizard part of this is that the fat from the disintegrating body caused small eruptions in the hot springs for several days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I, I find fascinating and everybody hates when I tell this story. <laughs> and then we made the rich women soap out of their own asses yep that's right okay so since the park's opening there have been around 20 recorded deaths attributed to the geothermal features in comparison to eight that have been attributed to bear attacks like that's what people seem to fail to remember about a uh, yellowstone is that it's a active volcanic site and all the water there is boiling or near boiling <laughs> In 2000, there was three employees that were night swimming in the Firehole River. And on their return hike, they were trying to jump what they thought was a small stream, but instead missed the jump and fell into the boiling waters of Cavern Spring. And uh, all three of them got severe burns. One of them died from the injuries. So let's get to the actual ghost stories then, if you're tired of me just talking about people dying horribly. Yeah. I mean, I'm not tired of it, but... We can move on. We can move on. There's nothing ghostly about those stories. I do have some horrible deaths with ghosts coming up. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah, so more along the proper lines here. In 1870, there was a group of militiamen that were sent to explore Yellowstone for gold deposits. One night near Lower Falls, a band of Native Americans stole the militiamen's pack horses, and they were attempting to get away from the men by rafting across the river and towing the horses with them, making them swim beside them. The whole escape went awry, and the whole lot of natives and horses got swept over the falls, killing all of them. Today, some claim to see the lower falls water turn red, as though it's been stained with blood, and there's a lot of reports of hearing native chanting, particularly if they're camping nearby it at night. I'm just picturing the elevator scene from The Shining. <laughs> Realize it's not the same thing, but, you know, 
that's where my brain took that imagery. So there is a pioneer, prospector, and Civil War vet named John F. Yancey. And he built a hotel near the uh, current day Pleasant Valley area called Yancey's Hole. <laughs> and he was... <laughs> I can't, yes. I, I can't keep a straight face through Yancey's hole. <laughs> Jesus Christ, who do you think I am? <laughs> Yancey was well known and liked by the local population. I bet, because um, his hole was famous. <laughs> famous Yancey's hole. In 1903, at the age of 77, Yancey made the trip to Gardner, Montana for the dedication of Roosevelt's arch, and he got to meet Roosevelt himself at the event. But he ended up catching pneumonia and died soon after. Worth it. And Worth it. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Today, people say that he haunts Roosevelt Lodge, which stands kind of close to the location where Yancey's hole used to be located. So, what Yancey does is he's reported on banging on the walls with a tin cup, and he likes to move and hide objects. Fucking Yancey. <laughs> he's also notorious for unsaddling horses, particularly if they were last ridden by a pretty girl. <laughs> so he's he's the old prospector version of a bicycle seat sniffer. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, that's not where my brain went, but I'm glad you got there. Let's see, there's also uh, talking about some of the hotels in Yellowstone. The ghost of a lead porter is reported to be seen at the Lake Yellowstone Hotel. He's described as being dressed in early 1900s clothing, and he often helps guests get luggage to the second floor and provides tips on the hiking trails, and then just vanishes. But that brings us up to Yellowstone's most notorious ghost story, the story of the Headless Bride. I thought Yancey's Hole would be the most notorious. <laughs> That's for a different reason. <laughs> Everyone between here and the Mississippi's heard of Yancey's Hole. <laughs> In 1915, the story goes, the daughter of a wealthy owner of a shipping company in New York rejected her father's choice for an arranged marriage. She ended up marrying an older house servant against her father's wishes. So the heartbroken father made a deal with him. He said, all right, I will give you guys a dowry on the condition that you leave New York and you never come back. That's how disappointed he was in the situation. So they leave on their honeymoon and they head to Yellowstone, staying at the Old Faithful Inn. Now, the Old Faithful Inn, the initial wings called the Old House. It was constructed over the winter of 1903 and 1904. The subsequent wings were added over the years through 1927, and they totaled 327 rooms in the uh, main building. Now there's a couple other hotels and inns nearby, but this is the, the first main one. A 2007 architectural survey named the Old Faithful Inn the 36th favorite building in America. That's very specific. It is. But, sounds nice. <laughs> it sounds nice. It is. The lobby is all log and limb construction, and it houses an 85-foot, 500-ton stone fireplace. The Old Faithful Inn also has an indoor treehouse and collection of catwalks up near the top of the building, and the catwalks lead to the roof. And the treehouse they call the crow's nest, and in its early days, they'd have an orchestra up there that would play music throughout the day. Getting your instruments up there just sounds like a nightmare, though. <laughs> it does. Well, maybe they just left it up there. <laughs> Anyway, this is where they decided to go on their honeymoon. It wasn't long before Daddy Dearest's predictions came true, and the husband ended up spending the dowry all on drink and poker, and within a month, they are broke. Sounds like a good honeymoon. <laughs> the daughter ends up asking the father for more money, but he denies it. One night, the staff hear the couple arguing, and eventually the husband leaves and he slams the door and they never see him again. So the staff gave the couple their space for a few days. Finally decide, well, we probably better go on and check on the wife. A housemaid goes into the room and finds the bride in the bathroom bloody and headless. Despite searching, it took the staff several days to locate her head. And when they found it, it was up in the crow's nest. What? Some guests claim to see a woman in a white dress descend from the crow's nest, carrying her own head under her arm. And by some, we mean absolutely none. 
because the story is a 1,000% of fabrication. <laughs> the story came about because a while back there is a reporter staying at the inn, and he kept hounding the bell captain. He said, well, there's got to be some ghosts. Tell me a ghost story. And the bell captain said, oh, no, there's no ghost stories. He said, no, no, there's got to be a story. Tell me a ghost story. So eventually the bell captain just breaks down, and so he starts telling the story about the headless bride. <laughs> the reporter goes, wow, that's really fascinating. Uh, when did it happen? <laughs> the bell captain said, just say any year you want. I just made it up. So... The most famous story that Yellowstone has is completely and admittedly made up. <laughs> wow. Yeah. There is one occasion from the Old Faithful Inn where a uh, woman claimed she saw a woman in 19th century clothing standing at the foot of her bed. But she had a head? She had a head. And the only evidence that they had was the woman's frightened claw marks were on her husband's shoulders. Huh. But... I mean, you hear a woman scream in the middle of the night, and the next morning there's scratches on her yeah. husband's shoulders, and she says, oh, no, there was a ghost. No one has sex on vacation. That's not what hotel rooms mm -hmm. are designed for. Not at all. Hashtag Bad Decisions Club. So that's what I got from Yellowstone, which wasn't great, but it was a slight bit more than anything else I could dig up on anything else. <laughs> well, like, I was finding some, like I said, some stuff that was interesting, but not... Not as interesting as I wanted it to be. So I just landed on Disneyland because it's got some ghosts. And I knew that already. I got America's favorite national park. You got America's favorite theme park. Oh. That's right. Look, I coordination. Sharing a brain. <laughs> so I am sad, though, because I don't think I made this up. I'm pretty sure this was something I listened to. The guys from Mysterious Universe talk about was that the conspiracy theories behind how Disneyland was built and the, where the King Arthur's carousel originally sat was a Freemason or Illuminati or something thing. And it was a portal or like a time shifter or something along those lines. And then I couldn't find anything about it. So maybe I did hallucinate this. I know you brought it up last episode. So. I just brought... Well, you know, you said Magic Kingdom last episode. That's in Disney World, not Disneyland. Disneyland. There's still, the, Disneyland is still divided into regions, I believe. Yeah, but Magic Kingdom is Disney World. It's Fantasyland and Disneyland. Well, it's Disneyland. Magic Kingdom is the Florida Disney World mini Disneyland. Well, I know that, but I thought, now you're making me question what I said versus what I thought. Okay, that's fair. I'm gaslighting you. Apparently. Gaslighting a story you told me. <laughs> I don't think it was Disney World. I'm pretty sure it was Disneyland. Okay. I'm, I don't know. I'm going by what I was told. Anyway, I found nothing about that, and I'm sad. So now I feel like I need to prove that this episode of Mysterious Universe happened at least. Oh, my God. To rein in my own crazy. Do you have to prove it on the air? No, no, no. <laughs> okay, okay. So I'm going to talk about an assortment of ghosts at Disneyland. I hear there's 999. Are you just fucking with me? Is this a thing? No, that's the, the gimmick behind the haunted house is that there's 999 ghosts and they're always looking for the thousands. Oh, the haunted mansion? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, I do know that they have had to put in like extra security measures at the haunted mansion at both parks because people always try to leave their dead ones ashes there. A lot of the rides people try to scatter ashes on. <laughs> they have an, an in, I forget what it is. There's an internal code that Disney uses, like a code gray or something yeah. like that. <laughs> For someone left ashes again. Well, the Haunted Mansion is supposed to have one real ghost. The story goes that when they were uh, constructing the mansion in 1963, they like sent some people through on a test run and the first test guest was so scared that she died of a heart attack inside the mansion, which is why they stopped construction until 1969. So the construction of the haunted mansions just came to a dead stop for six years. And that's the theory behind that. Huh. There was a man that died in a plane crash in the 1940s in Anaheim on the site that is now Disneyland. And he is supposed to be haunting the haunted mansion as well. They see a man with a cane at the loading dock where everybody gets into the doom buggies. That's supposed to be the pilot that died. There is actually supposed to be another ghost in the haunted mansion. There's supposed to be the ghost of a young boy that you can hear crying sometimes when you leave the mansion. His mother spread him there without approval from anyone at Disneyland. Mm. It's also said that he appears on the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. So he hits the good ones. Yeah, he's on my favorite ride. <laughs> so in 
So maybe there's a bunch that are supposed to be haunted. Tangle Haunted Mansion. 999 spooks. But how many of them are real spooks as opposed to animatronic spooks? Uh, 999 spooks and that kid ain't one. But there's also other ghosts. Obviously, Walt is supposed to haunt Disneyland, his apartment above the firehouse on Main Street. Yeah. They leave a light on in it all the time, and it's essentially, you know, like a ghost light in a theater. They used to, when Walt was in the park, they would leave the light on up there, so now they just leave it on all the time. Well, they turned it off after he died, and it, mm. anytime anyone came back, it would be on. So they're like, Walt wants this light on. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to do that. And the rumor goes up when they started turning the light off, and it kept coming back on. One employee came into the apartment and heard a voice say, I'm still here. So I don't know if this really happened or not. You mean opposed to all the other stories that we tell that we know happened for sure? I 100% believe the Kanaka Pete story. (laughs) Ah, No doubt in my mind. I know the one where we had mom on, all of those were sketchy, so we can't believe it. That's true. You can't trust her. She's crazy. (laughs) Um, Space Mountain has a ghost rider that is known to ride the ride with single riders. He's supposed to be a red-haired fellow that just disappears during the ride after he's been sitting next to you for a bit. Nice. And he's also been seen in the cast member's locker room. I remember hearing about that one that they mentioned. A ginger. There's a ginger on the loose, guys. (laughs) (laughs) No gingers allowed in Disneyland without accompaniment. There was a teen that was killed during a grad night in 1966 in Disneyland. He snuck in and got hit by the monorail while he was running from the the staff employees that were trying to be like, dude, you're not supposed to, you got paid. (laughs) We're real nice to you, but we want your money. So his ghost is supposed to be seen running along the side of the monorail at night. Hmm. There was a woman that died on the Matterhorn. In 1984, named Dolly, she got thrown from her bobsled. And ever since her death, people have heard her when they walk the tracks at night. And the spot they she died, they called Dolly's Dip. <laughs> yeah, Rowan was looking up a whole bunch of injuries and deaths in Disneyland on the rides. And they all attributed, to, oh, this person was stupid and didn't follow the rules. <laughs> I mean, that's usually how people die in those scenarios. It's not like that amusement park. What's that place in Jersey that they called, like, the Death Amusement oh, Park? Action Park, because the nickname was Traction Park. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and a Disneyland does not have my favorite theme park, Death, which was the kid who dropped his hat on a roller coaster and then jumped the fence to go back in and get it. When the roller coaster rolled through, it decapitated him. It was one of those hanging coasters where people's feet are dangling, and he got his head punted off by another writer. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Of course, her leg shattered into a hundred pieces. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the lady that died on the Matterhorn was decapitated. They think she unfastened her belt. Yeah, that's uh, that's the one that Rowan was telling me about, about a couple of, of accidents on the Matterhorn where people undid their own seatbelts. Yeah, there was a 15-year-old boy that also, in 1964, he died three days after his injuries, but he stood up after his companion unclipped him and fell out. Mm. Disneyland has its own woman in white spirit. There has been a woman seen in a white 19th century gown on Main Street after dark. That's the woman dressed as Mary Poppins. No, no, the oh. different, different one. Okay. She's not paid to be there. She's not clocking in or out. All right. But she is said to take lost children to the baby care center so they can be reunited with their parents. Oh. So maybe she is a little Mary Poppins esque. Maybe. I thought you were gonna say she takes them to the Fay Land or something, so it's probably better that she doesn't. Yeah. There are no missing four one ones in Disneyland, so far as I know. <laughs> to our knowledge. <laughs> what else we got? We got a few here left. I think Disneyland was just the land of death in the 60s, from what I'm finding here. Uh, there was a teenager that was killed on the People Mover. They were still trying to figure a lot of stuff out. then. And uh, the People Mover closed in 1995. I miss the People Mover. I loved the People Mover. I'm just picturing the, the moving sidewalks at the airport. It was like that, but you rode it. It was like a little buggy. Okay. But that ghost teenager is supposed to haunt Tomorrowland still, even with the People Mover closed. He likes to grab the hair of blondes, blonde ladies. <laughs> There's also supposed to be a ghost in the uh, rivers of America. So in uh, 
1873, two brothers stayed on Tom Sawyer's Island after the park closed, and then were going to swim to the rest of the park. Hmm. And one of the brothers drowned. And so they've seen him, like, they've seen ghosts drowning in that river since then. I was kind of curious how they clear that island before closing, because there's a lot of hiding places on it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they have, like, motion sensors and things now, probably, but, like, probably. they did not have those probably when we were kids. They just released the killer robot, and if you're there, you're there. Yeah. Another 18-year-old drowned in the rivers of America while trying to pilot a rubber emergency boat from Tom Sawyer's Island that he and a friend had stolen. <laughs> I do like the moral um, retribution that's happening in all of these. None of these are just really, oh, this was a tragic accident that no one saw coming. It's all, it's all you did something stupid, and... I woman riding Space Mountain became sick and... Uh, was in, unable to exit the video, so the employees told her to stay seated, and they were going to just remove her little car until she was able to get up from the track. But the other ride operators didn't realize that and sent her through for a second time. She arrived at the unloading zone the second time semi-conscious. <laughs> she uh, was taken to the Palm Harbor Hospital, where she remained in a coma and died one week later. She had a heart tumor that had dislodged and entered her brain. Oh, Jesus. That was going to Probably happen. not their, yeah, their that fault. Was, yeah. That was going to yeah. happen anyway. Yeah. Heart tumor dislodged and went into her brain. Can't make this shit up. In 1976, an unidentified woman sued Disney Parks because she claimed that one of the three little pigs that It's a Small World grabbed and fondled her. She claimed to have gained 50 pounds as a result of the incident and sued Disney for 150000 in damages for assault and battery, false imprisonment, and humiliation. The plaintiff dropped the charges after Disney's lawyers presented her with a photo of the costume, which only had inoperable stub arms, a common feature among the shorter characters that was eliminated in the later years. <laughs> My life got ruined because I was accidentally molested by a puppet. <laughs> I think there's an Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt episode about that. <laughs> Who do we talk to about just a three-hour special of Titus Goes into Disneyland? Because I will fund that. I'll fund that out of my own pocket. <laughs> Man, people, I hope you're getting some valuable life lessons here. <laughs> are they? What's the, what's the learn here? People are stupid? Is that the lesson? That's the lesson. Like, there's safety rules for a reason. If you're on a roller coaster, you should probably keep your lap belt snapped. I'm just yeah. saying. Yeah. And really, Disneyland is set up for everybody, even like, you know, very large guests who can't fit on like your average county or state fair ride. All those rides accommodate those people. They've been set up so that those people can go on those rides, too. There's no reason not to use the safety restraints. <laughs> yeah. I'm chasing a toddler cup of whiskey with cold brew coffee. I don't know what your problem is. Just sitting back and enjoying the show, that's all. So, dare I ask, did you uh, come up with a drink for our road trip? I think I've got, well... Or, or did you just tell us what it was? <laughs> so, for this episode, you're going to need to get a toddler cup. <laughs> I think this holds about six ounces. About right. You're going to fill it with whatever whiskey you can grab first. I'm drinking Pendleton, <laughs> the not chai infused that was left over from the last episode, <laughs> and then you chase it with cold brew coffee. I like Excalit mixing uppers and downers. It's like an amusement park <laughs> in my brain. <laughs> no? Do you have a real drink, or is that what we're doing? <laughs> we're just running with that. Well, I mean, I have a real concoction. I don't know if we can call it a drink. A real potential drink? You don't drink it. Oh, okay. You eat it. No. Yeah. What we got? Well, you remember, you've been to Disneyland more recently than I have. Dole Whip? Disneyland's fav yeah. famous Dole Whip? Shit, yeah. Think I'm going to make a boozy Dole Whip popsicle? Fuck yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on board. So, I've been studying some boozy popsicle recipes. I've been studying some, like, make your own Dole Whip recipes, and I'm going to combine them and make a boozy Dole Whip popsicle. Nice. I did do that make your own Dole Whip thing last year. How to pan out. It was all right, but there was way too much for us to consume. <laughs> like, the recipe I had was in way too great a quantity. That's like a quitter's mentality. Well, nobody else wanted to join in with me. Like, the kids were like, eh, I'm not that into it. I said, shut up. Why are your kids, <laughs> you know how much effort I put into why this? Why are kids so lame? I don't know. Killian would eat it. He'll probably try to eat a boozy Dole Whip popsicle. I'll probably have to make at least one without booze <laughs> in it. So Then you have to remember which is which. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe he'll just have a good nap time. 
hard to say. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to do a boozy Dole Whip popsicle. I think I'm going to use coconut rum for this. I might use regular rum because I already have that, but uh, I feel like coconut rum would probably taste better. Eating your alcohol? God damn it, Kate. You're a genius. <laughs> You figure out the rum ham, we're going to be in there. <laughs> I'm a problem solver. <laughs> if there's a problem, you'll know, all solve it. Check out my hook while the DJ revolves it. So you'll figure out how that's going to come together, and we'll put that recipe Yeah, on I'm not, like, we're going to have pineapple in this, obviously. Should we describe the Dole Whip for people who aren't familiar? I mean, if you would like to. Sean seemed confused, and I'm like, dude, you're from California. Like, what? The Dole Whip breaks down to pineapple, pineapple juice, and ice cream all blended together. And a kind of frozy, stiff concoction. Well, it's actually, like, Dole Whip is actually dairy-free. Well, the the make-your-own recipe I found had vanilla ice cream in it. So my plan, though, was to use pineapple and then... It's not, like, super coconutty, if I remember it correctly. It's obviously been a while, but I'm going to use, like, coconut, I think, condensed milk. Well, I was going to say, if you're trying to keep it from getting dairy, you could use... Like... You could try to get some coconut cream, like maybe some whipped coconut cream. Well, yeah, you could, but I was thinking condensed milk for the sweetness. Yeah. Um, but also canned coconut milk, mm-hmm. which is delicious. Unrelated, I found a coconut-based Cool Whip one day. Hmm. Not bad. Not a bad exchange if you need to. Uh, well, Cool Whip is dairy-free anyway, I think. So, I guess we got to talk about the next episode, what we want to do for I'm the hoping next you have a plan, because... Well, I do have, because I have two stories that I haven't been able to find a way to do, and I think I got a way to do them, but it's not an easy topic if you're not already prepared like I am, because the topic is noise and silence, because that was the only thing I could find that, that tied these stories that I was sitting on together, was noise and so silence. So, you want me to I talk about a silent ghost and a noisy ghost? Well, I mean, you don't have to do both, because I'll have two stories, but... Then you'll have to come up with a noisy drink, like full of Pop Rocks or something. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's not an easy one for you to do, so I understand if it's Why not... Why do you a... smoke crack before we record these episodes? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, this is what I got. <laughs> I know it's not easy for you to accomplish. It's not like I'm saying, oh, we're going to do this. <laughs> Good luck, fucker. Do we it's... have to... Do we have to do both of do do you have to do both of those stories together? I don't have to, but they're both pretty short. If you have another topic. Well, I just thought maybe like one or both stories had a different topic unrelated, and then we could do stories. One's from Portland and one's from Tacoma. They're kind of close. I five ghosts. They're like kind of close to what we yep. just did and failed yep. spectacularly. <laughs> I don't know. Son of a bitch. <laughs> she never says that. It's fine. For that episode, you'll just tell your stories, and then I'll just drink booze from Portland and Tacoma, and my (laughs) input will be heckling. Okay. I mean, if noise and silence, any poltergeist story is in play. Well, do both of them have noise and silence, or is it one or the other? You're not giving me enough info here, man. Well, I mean, it can be noise, or it can be lack of noise. They're they're different sides of the same ice cream token. (sighs) Should we just, the Oz effect? What's happening here? <laughs> Motherfucker's gaslighting me again. Second time in a row. <laughs> so a noisy ghost. We've narrowed it down to a noisy ghost, people. Because we would never know a ghost is there. They weren't noisy. <laughs> well, it's true. So yeah, they're all noise. It's all noise, not noise and silence. It's all noise. Noise, 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 smoke. noise. Smoking weed, smoking weed, <laughs> drinking beers, drinking. <laughs> Fuck my life. I quit. Or if you have a topic that you would like to do. <laughs> tadpoles. Tadpoles is a winner. I'm doing my story next week <laughs> on people who died of heart tumors that burst loose and hit their brain. I feel like there's not a lot of those, but I could be wrong. I haven't done the research. I haven't done the research either. I didn't even know that was an option, honestly. (laughs) This goes back to me needing my compression hose, though. Yeah. (laughs) Gotta keep those blood clots from forming. (laughs) I mean, I guess we'll do fucking noisy ghosts. (laughs) Fucking noisy ghosts it is. Woohoo! Let's try our drink. Fucking noisy drink. Noisy drink. Loudmouth soup. There you go. There's your drink. Oh, we didn't come up with a name for our boozy dull whip pops. Oh, we didn't, huh? Do we need to come up with a name? Sweet Walt Flanagan's dog. <laughs> was. I was thinking something Walt, but not that Walt. Yeah, I mean, I was too, but it transitioned there with the noise, noise, noise. Yeah. Walt's happy hour? No. 
Oh, well, Walt's head's frozen, so there's <laughs> some <laughs> Walt's cryogenic dole whip. <laughs> cryo whip? There you go. Walt's boozy cryo whip. <laughs> Ta-da! Wait, no, no, no. No, no? No? What, is, what was that, uh, that early 2000s trend? Ghost ride your whip? Yeah. <laughs> I think there's something there. Ghost ride the dole whip? Ghost ride the cryo whip? I, I kind of like ghost ride the dole whip. Something. More Something. than more than Walt's cryo whip, Walt's frozen pecker. More than that, <laughs> Walt's frozen frozen ghost whip. We don't need to involve a pecker and talk of Disney. Okay. We can insinuate it. Okay. We all know pineapple will do for you, but what can you do for pineapple? <laughs> I can whip, and I can name name. Can you? Can you do either of those? No. <laughs> but I understand the song goes something to that effect. <laughs> I believe so. <laughs> I'm sure I've heard it at a white person's wedding. <laughs> I do kind of miss white people's wedding. <laughs> Bartending white people's weddings is a trip, let me tell you. Yeah, I bet. Especially when they're trashy white people's weddings, then you have to tell the guests that they cannot just go across the street to the grocery store and bring in their own Coors Light and Bud Light, because that's not how liquor licensing works. I did bartend a trashy white wedding now that I think about it. And pretty much the main reason that I was bartending it was because I had a liquor license. And that was the only way they could bring liquor into the building. So, yeah, they kind of did just bring stuff over from a mini mart. <laughs> well, no, no, no. Like, this was this was at a, a wedding venue okay. where the contract said, no, this you was... will eat our food, uh, you will drink our liquor. No, this was just at the fairgrounds and they couldn't bring alcohol if they didn't have someone with a liquor license. So they brought me... <laughs> <laughs> Whose wedding did you bartend? A gal I worked with at Kmart. Proctor DJ. Nothing sounds like white trash. Like a gal I worked with at Kmart's wedding at the fairgrounds. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. They had a blue light special for Zima. <laughs> ah, Zima. Did we decide a drink name or have we moved on? <laughs> I think we've gotten distracted by our own nonsense again. Us? No. Pisha. Pisha. For shame. My espresso shots don't appear to have kicked in. Well, I'm sorry. But neither has my whiskey, so I'm just like... I also started new behavioral meds today. <laughs> so, Come on, dopamine. <laughs> so you're just all sorts of chemical cocktail right now. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Who wants to make some bad decisions? Bad decisions. We should get a new episode of Bad Decisions Club. We haven't got one of those in works yet. I know, but then I'm going to have to talk about like being roofied by a strip club DJ. and Mom's going to be all upset if she ever hears it. What's she going to do about it? go back in time 15 years <laughs> she'll cry that's what she'll do she'll cry she'll be so upset trauma response nah, 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 nah. it's my new band name what is it my trauma, trauma response oh. <laughs> it's my it's my black flag cover band it's a good name for a black flag cover band so i guess we should wrap this out wrap this up wrap this out rub this out we're gonna rub it out let's rub it out now for walt disney rub one out for walt disney that's right dicks out for walt so next episode we're going to talk about noise 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 i guess Noise, noise. We, we will be noise and we will be talking about noise. If you feel like you need a written apology from us, just DM me your address. <laughs> I'll kick it out in the mail in five to ten working weeks. It's fine. We've got a form. It's boilerplate. We just fill it in and it, it, it's real quick and easy. <laughs> then I just have to remember to like take it out of my car, put it in the mailbox. But, you know, we'll get there. We'll get there eventually. Check out our show notes. We'll have the sort of kind of named Frozen... Walt's Frozen Jizz Pops. <laughs> We'll have a name for it, and we'll have the recipe in the show notes. Show notes also has links for our website, has ways that you can support the podcast if you're, I don't know why you'd want to at this point. It seems like you might be implicated in something if you work to help support you're, the podcast. If you, if you support this podcast, you might end up on some sort of list. You most definitely will. If you're listening to this podcast, you're probably on some sort of list. <laughs> like, it's just... I just wouldn't try to leave the country for a little bit, all I'm saying. <laughs> as, your, as your legal counsel, I can advise you should probably stay put after listening to this podcast. Bird law. We have a Patreon. No one's asked for feet pics yet, but I'm pretty sure we're going to bust the uh, wrapper 
confirm that one any day here. True story. <laughs> I'm going to start selling feet pics to pay for getting my eyebrows microbladed because it doesn't feel like a justifiable expense, but I really want it done. So. You can also donate through Anchor. Anchor takes donations. and You, uh, you can just Venmo me. You can Venmo Katie, although there's no link for that in the show notes. Do you need your Venmo in the show notes? Is that You've brought it up a few times now. <laughs> I, just, I just want people to send me money, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what my Venmo name is. Honestly. And we have a D public store that you can go and select our wonderfully designed shirts. And people say, what the hell is that design about? And you say, oh, it's this podcast that holds me hostage once every couple of weeks. And then you say, my, what a lovely tea party. <laughs> You are just entirely Kevin Smith oriented at this point. Apparently, like, (laughs) maybe we should tag Kevin Smith in the show notes. (laughs) Do you think he wants to be involved with this? I think we should hold him hostage. I have tweeted at him a couple times, and it's funny whenever he likes one of our tweets, then, like, a bunch of his hanger-ons, like, suddenly start piling into the thread. Perfect. (laughs) Yeah. So, so I'll say something, you know, and, and tag at Kevin Smith, and then he'll like it, and then these people are like, oh, Kevin, 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 look at me, Kevin, look at me, look at me, Kevin, over here, look at me. Kind of fun. I just adjusted my headphones, so they were on neither ear. That was helpful. <laughs> <laughs> one on the throat chakra, one on the crown chakra, and now your whole aura is attuned to this show. Then you can screenshot your aura. <laughs> I'm still talking about show notes somehow. <laughs> we got... Links to where you can find us on our various places all over the web, and God bless you for trying. <laughs> we'll give you some links to just, you know, Disneyland.com, Yellowstone's website, to have something to look at. <laughs> Might be entertaining. See if we can find a good medical diagram of a tumor being moved out of the heart and into the brain. And if we can't, we'll draw one. I'll have Ramsey draw one. Perfect. Uh... Remember to drink responsibly and in accordance with your local laws. Uh, but don't end up our next ghost. Yes. Unless you're going to give us a damn good story and then we can then we can discuss. Yeah. So drink responsibly and in accordance with your local laws. Don't undo the safety device. Don't jump off a roller coaster. Don't. don't Go chase don't, waterfalls. Don't, don't kill yourself and yell, For the Booze and Spirits podcast, please, for the love of God. I don't know. We might get more listeners that way. Well, I know we would, but that's not the way I want to get more listeners. <laughs> Fine, I take it back. <laughs> okay, peace out, home slices. A jigga I thought you were going to say injector buyers or something. Jigga. No, 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 getting jiggy with it. No, 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 no,